Today we're going to be diagnosing and repairing a P0420 check engine light for an inefficient catalytic converter on a Honda. So here's how the oxygen sensor in the car works. We've got the engine producing warm exhaust gases here. It first goes to the primary O2 sensor, which measures currents to determine if the stoichiometric ratio of air to fuel is 14.1 for optimal combustion. We've got the secondary O2 sensor at the back of the catalytic converter to measure converter performance. It measures in voltage. Now if your catalytic converter is working at less than 95% efficiency, it's going to throw the P0420 code. Now if you plot your voltage time graph for your oxygen sensor, you'll see that the curve is quite random with different frequencies and an amplitude ranging from 0.1 to 0.9 volts. What we need to do is make this curve a little bit more orderly so the ECU understands that the catalytic converter is operating more efficiently. Now I've connected my OBD reader with the engine warm and my foot on the gas at about 2500 RPM. I'm graphing the second oxygen sensor values. Now normally the oxygen sensor values shouldn't fluctuate that much and it should be between 0.4 and 0.6 volts. However, you can see this one is fluctuating between 0.1 and about 0.7 volts fairly rapidly. Here's the air to fuel sensor, which is basically the front oxygen sensor. It measures in amps. As you can see, it's optimally zero, but if I rev the engine, the amperage changes. You can also see on the graph the lambda value, which should optimally be one if the stoichiometric ratio is 14.7. Now in order to correct this issue, we need to attach an RC circuit to the oxygen sensor in order to fool the computer into thinking it has the correct waveform and it won't throw a check engine light and fail emissions. To do that, we're going to use an RC circuit. That's basically a resistor wired in series and a capacitor wired in parallel to your voltage output. So now we get to the wiring diagram on the carb. We've got the secondary O2 sensor, which comes off of the catalytic converter. It's got a blue wire as well as a white wire that comes off of it. The blue ones are positive, you got to chop it and put in a 1 mega ohm resistor as well as a capacitor in parallel and then that goes to the ECU. These two black wires here, you don't want to touch them, that's for your heated O2 elements. This here is the oxygen sensor, bank 1 sensor 2 on the catalytic converter. If you trace the wire back, you'll see that it actually goes to a grommet underneath the passenger seat. So here we are behind the passenger seat. If you come in here and you remove the carpet, you'll find that this is the grommet from underneath where the oxygen sensor wire comes up. And if you go over there, you'll see the connector for it that we need to remove. To make the job a lot easier, I'm going to remove the four 14 millimeter bolts that hold the chair on so I can move it upward. There's two at the back here and two more bolts at the front. So here I've got the chair supported. It's actually easier to access the oxygen sensor from the front if you lift up the chair. It's just right here. You just squish the tab in the connector and you pull it out. Oh buddy, looks like this mod already paid off for itself. Now I'm going to need to remove some of the shielding in order to strip these wires so I can put in my resistor and capacitor. Here's the shielding removed from the oxygen sensor plug. The two black wires are for the oxygen sensor heater. We're not going to touch those. And these two wires here, the blue and white one, go to the ECU. Now if you're getting the engine code for a heated oxygen sensor malfunction, you can test it by using the continuity tester on a multimeter. So I'm just going to connect it here and you can see that this one's working. Otherwise, you'd have to replace the oxygen sensor. According to the wiring diagram, the blue wire is the positive and white is negative. So what I'm going to do is cut the blue wire and wire in line a 1 mega ohm resistor. And then after that, I'm going to wire in a capacitor in parallel. All right, I'm just going to come in here and chop the blue wire. So here we've got the blue wire cut and stripped, ready to put in the resistor and the white wire just stripped. All right, we're just tinning the tips. This wire is pretty hard to stick to. All right, we got a third hand on there with the resistor. We're ready to drop some solder on it. All right, so we're winding the capacitor and resistor together. Of course, this is the positive node, so make sure you put the positive node on the blue wire. And then we'll wire to the blue wire going to the ECU. Well, now we're going to solder the capacitor, resistor, and the blue wire together. So here we've got the capacitor wired to the negative side. We're just going to throw some solder on there now. Put a little bit of solder on that negative lead. So here we've got the capacitor and resistor soldered in. Now we're going to tape it up. So we got the connector all taped up with the resistor and capacitor and we're going to plug that in. It's a good idea to put some anti-seize on the chair bolts because they go into the rusty floor pan. With the O2 sensor plugged in, we're going to start the car and allow it to warm up. Now the output of an RC circuit to a stepped input, which you see in green here, is this red. It's basically a transient that takes about five times your time constant to charge to 99% of its charge. That time constant is governed by the product of your capacitance and your resistance in the circuit. So you need to choose an optimal resistor and capacitor to match your circuit values. Now if you superimpose your RC circuit on top of your oxygen sensor output, you can get this nice graph if it's optimized properly. You'll see that the amplitude is now between 0.7 and 0.4 volts and the frequency is a lot more consistent. 
your peak to valley value will be 5 times your time constant if it's properly optimized. This acts like a low pass filter. Here I'm graphing the oxygen sensor too which is after the catalytic converter. I've got the RPMs held at about 2500 and you can see the voltage readings coming off of the sensor is so much smoother compared to what I had before the mod. Hopefully this smoother curve should make the check engine light stay off and I can pass an emissions test. The next step would be to drive the vehicle for about 30 to 40 kilometers in both stop and go traffic and on the highway to allow the computer to set its monitors to ready. You can tell that your monitors are not ready when your check engine light blinks five times after turning the ignition on. So I've driven over 50 kilometers and you can see my check engine light has not illuminated. And you can see that after driving so long, most of the monitors have changed to the ready state, which means I can pass an emissions test. Alright, I just went for an emissions test and I passed. As you can see, most of the monitors were ready with the exception of the catalyst. In my province, one not ready monitor is allowed in order to pass the test. So all it really took was a 50 cent capacitor and resistor and I can pass my emissions test. Ah, these darn Hondas. You get rid of one idiot light and this other light shows up.